Hello and welcome to number 10 of the Abundant Living Ecuador podcast. I'm Jesse Bayer, here with Darnell Dunn, and a special guest today, um, Marco Munoz, who is a local bilingual attorney. Um, we hope to have a great show for you today. We're excited, excited to have Marco in studio with us. Um, get the business out of the way real quick. www.abecuador.com is where you can find us. That's A as in Apple, B as in Boy, Ecuador.com. Toll free line 888-999-0948. That's 888-999-0948. We are a real estate and relocation services company based out of Loja, Ecuador. And uh, let's get right to it. So Again, joined by Marco Munoz, a bilingual attorney, also based out of Loja. Um, Marco has a master's in taxation law, um, also does quite a bit of real estate work, some immigration, uh, and, and has his hand in some other hats as well. Most of the attorneys here in Ecuador don't specialize as specifically as they do um, in the States. Many many have their hats in a, in a few rings, so that, that would include Marco as well. He's somebody who we work with um, here in Loja and, and would be very comfortable recommending to anybody who's immigrating here and looking for uh, help with immigration or legal matters or real estate purchases, etc., um, so, Marco, welcome to the show. Thanks for being here. Thank you very much, and uh, happy Thanksgiving Day. Well, um, thank you for the invitation as well, and uh, I'm happy to be here with you in this program. Yeah, we'll go ahead and um, date ourselves a little bit. We um, we recorded three shows this week due to some scheduling parameters, so we're actually here recording on Thanksgiving uh, in Ecuador. Yes, I'm a little depressed about that, uh, <laughs> feeling a little homesick, missing the family, but we're carrying on, so here we are. We'll probably release this next week or the week after, but um, we're here sadly recording on Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll be out of here in time to catch the Eagles game. Catch the Eagles Don't game. Don't worry. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, Marco, let's um, let's start with some big picture stuff. Um what are your what what are you seeing currently um politically in Ecuador and how does that carry over into what you're seeing maybe within the business community the real estate market what are your thoughts on kind of where we're at in, in cyclically in terms of um those types of things here in Ecuador Well there there is a big change coming on um and this starts with the election of uh, the president in Argentina so that means that a whole process is uh, coming over uh, to South America. Well, this is uh, what we can see as Ecuadorians, you know, because after eight years uh, of uh, uh, President uh, Correa, you know, having the responsibility to, um, uh, you know, manage the, the, the Ecuador, you know, uh, we are hoping that this change brings new and fresh uh, um, uh, things for, for Ecuador and for the Ecuadorians as well, and for expats and all the, the people, you know, living here in, in Ecuador. Well, about the real estate business, um, I manage... Uh, uh, or I'm living in, in, in two places, uh, actually, uh, here in Loja and also in Vilcabamba. So what we saw in about uh, a year or probably more is that uh, the real estate business is, is, is falling down a little bit. Uh, this is because, uh, you know, the, um, the investor or the investment rules are not clear in this country. You know, so for expats trying to come uh, to, to this country and uh, not having things really clear about that, you know, sometimes it's really difficult. Plus the fact that it's a challenge, you know, to come to a foreign country and, and trying to, to see what you can do there, you know. Uh, with uh, uh, not policies clear about uh, immigration uh, or policies changing all the times, the rules are changing by the government offices very often. So for us, uh, you know, as an attorney, it's very difficult to handle that. 
Yeah, I mean, certainly the uncertainty creates issues in the market. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, we've noticed that as well. And we certainly, you know, we, we spend a lot of time trying to stay ahead of, you know, proposed rules changes. Um, less on the immigration side, more on, you know, I think really for, for what we've seen, it's like the proposals around taxes and have really caused a lot of inertia. Like have mm-hmm. really, you know, caused people to take a step back from some of the some of the investment stuff. Yeah. Particularly the inheritance tax proposal in the uh, capital gains tax proposal. We actually had a couple of deals that ended up falling through as a result of that. People yeah. were uncertain about it and said, well, let's wait to see what happens before we make a move. And now that the president has taken those off the table as far as I know, but it still seems like there's some maybe a bit of a hangover effect where people are still still waiting and seeing even though he's you know taking them off the table so the well, damage has kind of been done as you know politics is like a game but uh, you know sometimes this this game is you know is in this country especially is ridiculous why a few months ago the president korea you know mentioned that he's going to change the constitution right. well the people claim and uh, where a lot of uh, parades or not protests, not, uh, protests marching, yeah. yeah, marches, you know. And today it's another one saying, you know, why we cannot believe the president Korea, because he supposed to say something like, well, uh, I am not going to move forward with these changes on the constitution and with the taxes, but at the end the assembly is going to do that, right? So where we are now, again, with the same uh, fact that, uh, you know, the, the economy of, of, of the Ecuadorians are going to be affected. Mm-hmm. And what are you seeing on that front in terms of, I know you were mentioning, we were, we were walking over to the studio and you were mentioning um, that there's less um, financial help at the federal level for the munici- municipalities. Um, explain a little bit about, about that. Of course. Well, this is a fact that everybody knows. President Correa um, requests many, many loans internationally. Right. So what happens with that? You know, uh, the oil uh, economy, it's, it's over. I mean, it's not going... Uh, anymore, and uh, the the government itself is uh, has a lot of um, uh, money that they have to pay for government offices, municipalities, etc. So what is happening here is that uh, because the central government doesn't have the money to give to the municipalities, you know, to build, uh, make roads and everything. Mm -hmm. Uh, The municipalities uh, are under the obligation to find the resources, you know, to to do their job. It's as simple as that. So we have now, uh, you know, new policies for fines, very high uh, 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 fines. Um, they increase the land tax payments. They increase the the transfer ownership um, uh, taxes as well. Mm-hmm. I mean, they increase everything, yeah. and this is affecting not only the expats. For sure, it's affect, uh, affecting everybody here in in Loja and in Ecuador as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, so just to summarize that, if I may, so oil revenues drying up. Federal government not as plush with cash as they were in the past. In addition to that, of course, there's the the loans they've taken out that they have to repay. Um, therefore, less money coming from to the local governments from the federal government. Local governments looking to you know fill that gap, and you know that coming down in the form of taxes and fees, and you know we've got new speeding cameras in Loja and, and those kinds of things. Mm-hmm. Yes, that's true. You know, another trend that's impacting this as well, too, is the strong dollar. Um, Ecuador is one of the three countries in Latin America that uses the dollar as legal tender. And so 
when you've got countries around you that have their own currency that have the ability to devalue, it puts pressure on the economy as well, too. And another reason why these municipalities are trying to fill that gap, um, you know, meet their payroll and everything else that they have to do, um, plan projects. I know here in Loja, we've got a, a plan to revitalize the center of the city, uh, and that's going to cost a pretty penny, I'm sure. Yeah. 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 Sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. We can see uh, that uh, not only in, in Loja, especially in, in the borders, uh, you know, like uh, uh, near Colombia, in Tulcan, and mm -hmm. also in Macara, you know, because Loja is, of course, uh, in the border with Peru. So what is happening there? You know, because of the... Um, uh, that the dollar is stronger than their currency, you know, uh, pesos in Colombia and Nuevo Soles in Peru. So um, the Ecuadorians were going to the, uh, their communities or their um, the, the, the countries next to Ecuador in trying to buy uh, you know, goods. furniture, goods and everything. TVs. TVs. But what happened? When they arrived to Ecuador, the customs were there, you know, like... Uh, um, Pay know, up. <laughs> yes, exactly. Saying, okay, well, you are coming with this t new TV, uh, um, so you have to pay now for taxes. Yeah. It costs $400 in, in Peru. It cost it cost uh, $1,200 in Ecuador, so give us $800 in taxes. <laughs> yeah, something like that, exactly. So that's, you know, that is what hap is happening right now. Yeah. So... Well, it's affecting everybody. Right. And the tariffs as well, too, that they put into place to to um, combat that as well, too, right? The tariffs, the taxes, the salvaguardias? The salvaguardias, yes, of course. Yes, um, uh, in 2016, they are going to reduce them. But we don't know if the prices internally in Ecuador are going to be reduced as well. Mm. So, it's, we, we spent... Yeah, good, you know... That was uh, I was reading about that the other day, and uh, the prospects of being able to get European goods um, not not taxed the way they are now is exciting for for me. Yeah. Uh, it'd be very nice to be able to purchase, you know, cars and and liquor and and clothes and those kinds of things that right now in Ecuador are you know so much more expensive than they are internationally as a result of the tax structure. So, yeah, that free trade agreement is due to take full effect in September of next year. Yeah. Listen, I, I was trying to bring a car for one of my clients, and we went to Peru. The same car in Peru cost around uh, uh, something like uh, $40,000. The same car here in Ecuador is like uh, $80,000 right. or probably more. Right. That's because 60% uh, of taxes are charged to any kind of car, right? And they still keep, you know, the um, the law that uh, all the expats that are coming to to Ecuador as residents, uh, they cannot bring cars, motorcycles, ATVs, something like that. So okay. it's forbidden by law. Okay, but before it wasn't, right? Before it was, but they have certain rules that, you know, allow you to exactly exemptions that, uh, you know, have, you can have the opportunity to bring them for a specific, uh, you know, cases. But now, now that, it's impossible. Okay. I thought so. That's what I had pieced together on the Internet, but I had been meaning to ask you about that because I've had a couple of our relocation services clients who have asked about that. Mm-hmm. And what have you seen um, locally here? It's like, you know, we've only been here two and a half years or so. Um, we feel like there's been a decent amount of change in Loja over that time. It seems like, I don't know, for, from my perspective, it seems like a city kind of on the come, like on the rise. Um, you have lots of new little, you know, uh, boutique restaurants and shops and stuff like that opening up. Um, it seems like internationally, people are starting to discover Loja. What have you seen locally? Over, what, what would you say the trends are um, in the Loja area from your perspective? Well, <clears throat> because I, I was living here in this country for 42 years, I can tell you something very specific about your question. Well, 
before this boom of uh, expats coming to to Ecuador, life here was, you know, cheaper and easy. And this um, transac uh, transaction or this uh, um, change was made because um, expats comes with uh, a lot of money from, you know, their jobs or. Uh, social security or something like that so when they arrived they were offering more like for example for properties you know so real estate changed completely a piece what, of what land, years what years would you say that was the the change yeah uh, for example uh, um, a small piece of land 2000 uh, square meters you know 15 years ago was like probably five thousand five thousand dollars in mm -hmm. Bilcabamba right next uh, town next to to Loja. now the same piece of land is thirty thousand dollars so it's ridiculous expensive you know now and of course there are a lot of little uh, stores restaurants that you know um feel the difference as well and uh, increase the the business you know a, a lot of restaurants opening but you know in this time there are a lot of restaurants closing the doors as well mm -hmm. because something happens in uh, like a year ago. I mean, you know, the, the people doesn't have the, say, the same uh, money to spend in those restaurants as they have before. Yeah. So, you know, I noticed that at least three or four restaurants in the last six months closed in, in Vilcabamba and same thing is happening here in Loja. Well, so we understood that uh, this uh, economy change is probably going to affect us in, in, in the next year and it's probably going to be worse. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree um, because mostly because of the oil revenue and the tax policies. It seems like exactly yeah. it seems like those were those were you know, some of those large changes that took place over the last few years is all the new taxes. And that, you know, that makes it very hard to operate a business profitably, um, especially if we're talking restaurants. It's like, you know, how many restaurants are in Vilcabamba versus the population? It has to be the largest like, ratio on the planet. I mean, I mean there's, there's almost a restaurant per person. Uh, it's amazing how quick they, yes. quickly they come and go there. And it's good because you have a variety, but, you know, at the same time, there is a problem because you know uh, many of these restaurants open their doors uh, expecting have you know to have a lot of people coming to their restaurants but when after a month or uh, three months they are just paying the rent which is high in Bilcabamba you right. know for a place like you know like a restaurant it's probably something like four five hundred six hundred dollars mm -hmm. so they have just enough money to pay the rent. Sometimes they don't have, you know, enough money to pay for that. So after three or four months with that situation, they have to close. They don't have option. Right? Yeah. And that time, you know, that f <clears throat> foreigner influx, which of course raises prices, um, coincided as well with, you know, the Federal Reserve printing an enormous, you know, the money supply increasing dramatically. So that's going to also cause some of that inflation that you're referring to. Yes, that's true. And th that was happening before we changed the the dollar as a currency. I remember ah, okay. when we have the Sucre, mm -hmm. you know, they were doing exactly what the United States is doing now. I right. mean, they are they were using the printer. You know, they were printing money without any support that they supposed to they supposed to have in, you know in the economy to not cause the inflation that you were talking about somebody was telling me give me the the actual numbers on this somebody was telling me that in the months leading up to the collapse of the sucre banks were paying something like 30 or 50 percent interest on savings on you know savings accounts just to, to deposit money is that is that right yes of course but that happens be because if you made the, a loan, you have to pay 50% right. of interest. <laughs> Imagine. So that's that's why, of course. Right. What is that? There's an African country that has like... Zimbabwe. A, Zimbabwe. What Zimbabwe, is it? Like a $2 yeah. trillion dollar bill or yeah. something? <laughs> <laughs> At least a trillion dollar bill. I've seen a one. A trillion dollar bill, yeah. 
I mean, Venezuela is not far behind in yeah. those kinds of ways. Yeah, I, yeah, it worked. Somebody brought one in one time. A, a trillion dollar bill. Yeah, from yeah. Zimbabwe. Like some guy had it in a frame or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <He's> a- <laughs> <laughs> right. You could buy a sandwich. <laughs> and um, what would you say? Are I don't know. I don't know if you invest as well, Marco, here or not. But um, what are you looking at as opportunities given given these some of these circumstances? You know, a lot of times, a lot of times, the most money to be made is when people are afraid, right? And and I think we're certainly to some degree in that in that kind of dynamic here in Ecuador. Um, you know, we've talked about in the past. Right now, there's not a whole lot of buyers and there's a lot of sellers. Um, so it's a market where if you have cash, for example, um, you know you can really find some some deals that uh, if those tax proposals hadn't been on the table and if the oil revenue hadn't fallen the way it had and those kinds of things, you know th- those prices would be a lot higher. Um, but I don't want to lead you on the question. What what um you know what are you seeing on the other side of the coin on the opportunity side? Well. Uh, it's very difficult now, you know, if uh, if you have money, which I don't have, and, you know, many of the people here uh, uh, don't have as well, and uh, with the banks limiting the loans, because right. this is important to know, now any bank is going to give you a loan only if you have like six or one year of uh, a bank account there and managing really well, they can give you some money. But it's forbidden now, you know, for the credit unions and for banks to give you money. So that, for me, it's like, you know, something is something really grown is happening here. Mm-hmm. But, you know, for people who have some money, what they are doing is investing in, in, in real estate or some others trying to find other opportunities like, you know, buying gold or silver. Uh, I recommend to some of my clients to buy gold now because um, the the international uh, price is, is really low. So yeah. that means that something is going to happen. And probably the people can take, you know, some, some money or th- they can earn some money from you know the difference that uh, the 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 price in 2006 is probably going to be higher than it's actually now mm-hmm. well uh, which other opportunities or in, uh, in investments probably in um, well silver is another option as i told you but i cannot see any other you know because the economy now is is uh, uh, suffering and of course we are paying for, for that, you know, as uh, Ecuadorians. Mm-hmm. So I don't I don't know if you have any other option. Maybe, no, it's very difficult. It's very difficult to find another another way of a solution. But that makes a lot of sense to be able to buy gold or silver cheap and to be able to, um, you know, if the economy goes the other way um, from here, to be able to, um, benefit from the rise in price and then be able to to buy things at an even better price. Um, what is uh, the other thing that's unique about Ecuador is that they produce gold and silver here. Do you know of any um, dealers or miners who um, our clients can buy gold or silver directly from? Yes, of course. As uh, we were talking previously, you know, Ecuador uh, has a lot of loans internationally and we have to consider the fact that most you know probably 90 percent of those loans are with china right (laughs) and you know the fact the mining factories are from china so we have a lot of uh, chinese investments now you know working in ecuador for electricity, for mining, for you know, uh, buying. Uh, I mean, building the um, this new electricity project. The hydroelectric yes. stuff. Yeah. So you know, they are everywhere now here in Ecuador, and that's because you know the the economy uh, is supported by by China by China now here in in, in Ecuador, and especially with this. Uh, actual president. Right. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, they got to make sure that they have collateral to 
that they have control of the collateral to pay the loan back so that if Ecuador can't pay the loan back, then they get to keep those assets. Yes, I agree with you. Yeah. So, But do you know any, um, any smaller miners, maybe Ecuadorian miners, that people can buy gold or silver directly from? Well, two years ago, the government started a campaign you know, to close those small uh, yeah. mining people, you know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, with the argument that they don't have the right to do that, that they were affecting the environment, you know, something like that. Like if a small uh, uh, um, company or a small group of people, you know, doing some mining in the rivers or um, you know, mines or everywhere, uh, you know, uh, can affect more than a big company destroying completely the environment, you know, the resources, the rainforest, you know, so right. it's like... <laughs> Ridiculous. <laughs> yes. Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, it's just that, you know, when the people, the people who are loaning you the money aren't doing environmental damage, of course. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, we have a mutual friend whose father was in that business, and you know, was essentially destroyed when they when they passed those um, taxes and regulations surrounding mining. Um, they they sequestered his equipment. Mm -hmm. uh, he can't even get his hands on his own equipment, and his mine is no longer operational. And obviously, you know, he had a huge investment into that. Exactly. So, That's the problem. Yeah. You know, the people invest a lot of money thinking that if you made that investment here in Ecuador, you can get something, uh, you know, uh, in er some money uh, at the same time. But, you know, the fact is different. With a government changing the rules all, all the time, policies, and trying to um, benefit or give more benefits to the uh, high companies for you know the the right. Chinese government, the, the the preferred players was you know their boys. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> the guys who pay their bills, <laughs> right? It's as simple as that. Yeah. No, those things. I mean, those are the things I enjoy the least about Ecuador, for sure. Um, some of those policies and and some of the directions that those things have gone in. Um, I have hope in that way which I didn't have maybe six months or a year ago. I have some hope in that way because it seems like, and I'd love to get your opinion on this, it seems like amongst the public that tide has turned to some degree. So the new proposals coming out of, uh, I guess is it Quito that they do business in? Mm -hmm. Coming out of Quito um, don't aren't just flying through um, with 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 approval um, when they for example with the herencia the herencia tax and the plus valia um, you know yeah. they they were stopped uh, based off of large protests and those kinds of things what do you see in the in your own just your opinion as far as the future and and the way well, that this may go I, I can answer you, your question with just one example Remember when uh, Ecuador was making international requests to support uh, uh, the rainforest in uh, Yasuni, mm -hmm. Yasuni in, in you know near Quito. So they got some money, but at the end, you know when the, they decide unilaterally that they don't have enough money to 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 keep that uh, uh, Yasuni park uh, uh, intact, you know they decide well. Because we don't have enough money that now we are going to give that uh, um, a part of, of, of that uh, reserve to to the Chinese people, you know, just to make exploration. To drill, to and, drill for and drill. Yeah. Yes. So with a government changing all the time, you know, the, the, the rules, uh, as I told you previously, you know, it's very complicated to know what is the the next step is going to be, mm -hmm. you know, for, for example, with inheritance, you know, uh, they, as you know, uh, um, in the middle of this uh, year, they sent, I mean, President Correa sent to the assembly, you know, the project to change the, the um, uh, inheritance uh, tax and also the... Uh, utilidad a la venta, which is called the uh, like capital gains. Capital, yeah, capital gains. gains, exactly. Well, 
after the protest and uh, you know all the people saying that is not constitutional he said well if it's not constitutional we are going to change the constitution you know so that's why we have more than 20 constitutions here in in, in ecuador so you know <laughs> well and they are going to make big changes in the next year which is going to affect everyone here in ecuador like like what what changes there like uh, you know they are going to approve at the end they are going to approve the the capital gains and the inheritance law and also you know changes uh, changes about uh, you know the um, how the government is going to support the um, the municipalities you know so these changes are going to affect everyone mm -hmm. But no, um, there's not really any, it's not clear how that's going to happen. Not yet, because, you know, uh, one of the m uh, most important changes is about the re-election. Re so mm -hmm. so yeah. it's it's like in Because they have to change the constitution to get rid of term limits for him to continue to be yes, president. Yes, exactly. But, you know, as I told you from the very beginning, this is like a game. I mean... He's saying now that he is not going to participate in 2007, I mean in 2017, uh, uh, but at the end, we don't know if uh, with the support that he has from the assembly with more than 100 uh, uh, assembleistas, right. you know, senators, right. senators, you know, we don't know if in the future they are going to change again the constitution and they are going to allow him to be president again mm -hmm. so it's not clear for mm -hmm. you know for anybody in this country mm -hmm. yeah that i agree with it's definitely not clear it's it's hard for me to imagine the public going along with for example if they if they try to bring back if they try to revive the proposals surrounding inheritance and capital gains it's hard for me to imagine the public allowing that to stand and just to give people a frame of reference when people protest here unlike the states and, and other places the government listens there's not you know ecuador and you can tell me the numbers on this marco um how many presidents and how many years did they kick out of office before correa well um we have like uh, before correa 10 years of changes you know right. um, and it starts with the uh, abdallah bukaran then uh, uh, was another president in uh, in a period of uh, of one year. Then was the the election with um, what is the name of this president? Uh, uh, I forgot his name, but you know he was replaced as well. He has to uh, left the 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 country in, uh, in an airplane. You know, he snuck out. <laughs> exactly. You know. So then Correa took uh, um, in uh, 2007, exactly, in 2007, because in 2008 we approved the constitution. But he was smart, you know, uh, because he participated as president saying, I am not going to, to participate with a uh, um, team of uh, senators, you know. Mm -hmm. So in the next year after he was the president, you know, he changed completely, you know, that uh, um, part of the constitution, you know, to approve, you know, with the new senators, the, the constitution of 2008. Well, that gives him enough power to manage all the, the, the power uh, government offices here in, in Ecuador, like uh, the court, like the constitutional court, like the... Um, uh, Consejo de Electoral, which is the, the, the government office which managed the elections. 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 Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now he has everything. He has all the power to change and do whatever he wants. So, so that's, you know, of course for him is is really good, but for the people, <laughs> you know, which uh, um, uh, are uh, worried about what he's going to do with that power, you know, so we don't, we don't have, uh, for example, you know, the, um, if a um, parodist say uh, something against journalist, him, journalist, yeah. journalist, I'm sorry, 
journalists say something against President Correa, right. instantly, right. you know, they put pressure on the um, owners of the TV uh, yeah. program or, you know, radio or whatever, and they kick off this, this guy. Yeah. You know, that happens many times, not yeah. only one. No, I know. The sen yeah. There's terrible censorship here that way. Yeah. No, I mean, you know, you won't get any argument from me out of, uh, there's not a more, uh, you know, this stuff disturbs me greatly. I'm very, um, very much, you know, uh, research these things and very much against these things. I, I, I rail against them all the time. In fact, I try not to because it gets me <laughs> angry. But, um, but the point I, the point that I, I was trying to make is that it seems as though a year ago, for example, when, when Correa would propose something, it was just become law immediately. Um, that's not the case now. And so I, I'm wondering, given Ecuador's history of kicking presidents out when, they're, when the populace is not happy with um, you know, the activities of the administration, and given what happened recently with the proposed tax changes, it seems to me, and I, I, it sounds to me like you differ from me on this, and you would know better than I would, but it seems to me that that sort of rubber stamp approval is not there anymore. That sort of, you know, hey, you know, dictator Correa says X and it's done kind of dynamic has come and gone. Um, it feels to me like if he were to announce in the upcoming, you know, months or year or year, that he was changing the constitution and going to, you know, run again and they're going to do this uh, herencia and plusvalia, that there would be a major, you know, just enormous uprising. Um, that's kind of what I was getting at. I don't know. I don't know what you're thinking. Well, let me tell you two things. One is the name of the president uh, was Lucio, Gut Lucio uh, Gutierrez. Uh, and that was the president... Uh, which uh, use a helicopter to go to the, uh, you know, to, to escape. Exactly, to yeah. escape and then you live in an airplane. Well, <laughs> <laughs> the, the second is that it's very simple, you know, Correa is not a fool, man. You no. know, he's very uh, smart. So he knows that his popularity is really low now. So he cannot take the risk to change or to do something that the people is going to claim. Right. Because you then know? he'll he'll end up on a helicopter <laughs> to an airplane. <laughs> and, and you also has to remember or have to remember that, you know, this president was paying a, a bono solidario. So I don't know if you understand that part. It's like a help or support from the government. You know, for oh, like the welfare poor, for the poor. Ah, yeah, 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 like welfare. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's paying. He's paying. He's paying poor people. Basically. Yes. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. Now the problem is that he reduced, you know, the beneficiaries of that uh, uh, bono mm. solidario. Oh, he did. Yeah. I didn't know about that. Exactly. So now it's because the, the the government doesn't have enough money now. So that's why uh, they are reducing um, workers. I know that yeah. CNT, the communications company, fired like 200 uh, people. Oh, really? You know, and they are doing exactly the same with some other government offices. Right. Because like with Seguro, like mm -hmm. Social Security, they cut the, uh, the um, percentage that they have to fund as well, too, correct? Exactly. <laughs> but not the amount we have to pay. <laughs> right. Not the amount we have to pay. Yes. But, you know, uh, for example... Uh, every government office used to have uh, security companies, you know, like three or four guards, you know, there. Now, only a few of them has guards, you know, so they are reducing, you know, the expenditures the government has. Mm. Or have. Well, this is part of the, of, of the story, you know, the, the hidden or under the table, you know, it's probably worse. Mm. That's interesting, and yeah, I had, I had read that uh, the budget next year is supposed to be cut by seventeen percent, the federal budget. Yes, exactly. Well, and probably more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean that's another kind of problem from my perspective that I see is like, as the economy gets more and more restricted by government actions, both in terms of taxes and regulation, um, there's less and less jobs. 
and then the government becomes kind of the sole employer for good paying jobs and then the people who work for the government you know they know where they get fed so they then support the government and you kind of have this sort of line in the sand that gets drawn you know most most police for example support the government the military supports the government why they're getting very well paid off of tax money <laughs> you know they're not going to bite the hand that feeds them and yet at the same time all the new regulations and all of the new taxes and the structures that the government's putting in place that those people are paid to enforce are destroying the economy right. and so you've got private private business getting hurt and people losing jobs because of government action and then you've got the government paying the people who enforce those rules a lot comparatively and you've got this kind of division that's you know really ugly and and of course you know the cops have guns so that doesn't help either right. no and the interesting thing about that is that really the government payrolls and the government jobs that these people are getting paid i mean they're they're paid to take money away from interest that actually generates revenue because even you know the government generates revenue that's money that's being taken out of the economy right. at the end of the day exactly mm -hmm. right and also the problem and i can tell you because i have a lot of friends uh, which the government compelled them to renounce their jobs but they are still two years uh, probably more waiting for the leak or their payment of their their um, work uh, um, liquidations or you know how um, it's a severance okay yeah severance mm -hmm. would like be the, the money that they get after they leave kind of thing yes package exactly. yes severance you know so imagine a man who lost his job and uh, was you know and uh, was waiting for for his money and after two years, you know, have to maintain his family, you know, himself, and they don't have the money, you know, to pay anything. So it's it's really bad. But if you and have a problem. because the, the, the government doesn't have the money. Right. You know, they don't have the money to pay for that. But if you have a private business and you and and you fire somebody, well, you know, you better you better liquidate them or else. <laughs> Otherwise, yeah, you you have, were, you have we're to going pay. to be in trouble. Yes. Yeah, right. You have to pay a severance. Yeah, I mean, and that's some of the problems. It's 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 difficult for business owners to make the decision to hire people because the laws surrounding employment are are so punitive that you know if you want to, for example, if you want to fire them because they're not performing, you know, you're going to have to basically pay them out, like buy them out, essentially, which you know costs a lot of money and. When and they're not an owner. You could end up getting sued and, you know, there's there's laws around um, paying out percentages of your profit to employees. And there's just a lot of incentive that the government has created not to hire people if you're a business owner. You're better off, you know, doing it with your family kind of thing so that you don't have to get into some of that craziness. Yeah. So I have an example for that and, and, and probably you know about it. Um, Alvaro Novoa, you know, a big... Uh, uh, company manager. I mean, he has a lot of companies and he's a very rich man. Yeah. From Guayaquil, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Because he was part of the of the politic uh, in Ecuador, um, and he was uh, in a certain way trying to fight with the Korea. So what Korea did with the IRS was. Uh, compel him to pay something like two hundred thousand million, two hundred million, two hundred million dollars, you know, to the government. So it was insane, and because he doesn't have the the, the, the money to pay that, or he doesn't care about it, or you know, they they decide to took one of his properties valued in more than the amount that he was owing to the IRS, you know for the government. So the government is now managing that. So what happened with the workers inside? They told them, well, the government doesn't have the money to pay for that, for, for your salaries. So now you be, you can be part of the of the owners. So you you can, for your liquidations, you are, we are going to put you as owners 
of the company, you know, like shares. Yeah, shareholders, yeah. Shareholders. Yes. And then we're going to tax you on those shares. <laughs> <laughs> of course, but, you know, which is worse is that uh, they don't have, you know, for all the, the, the time that they were working there, they don't have any benefit. I mean, they don't have the right to claim for any money. So, you know, the government was trying to do that. So, so in other words, they own a piece of nothing, basically, exactly. is what you're saying. Exactly. Because they're not going to get paid, but they own this thing, which I guess no one's managing now. So. <laughs> yes. So tell me if it's not. Well, I mean, it's socialism. I mean, it's yes. just. And like, who are they going to sell those worthless shares to? Right. So what did they get? <laughs> okay, thanks for my shares. I'd like to cash out. Oh, well, no, actually. Uh, <laughs> you just got to keep the shares. Yeah, these are the kinds of shares that you can't cash out. <laughs> what kind of shares are those? The ones that we give away. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. At the end, that's what happened. Well, I have found somebody as down on this government as I am. It's funny, like most people come in here or, or we just talk to like, you know, they're very, they might not like this or not like that. But in general, they're, you know, much more optimistic about the government than you or I <laughs> are, Marco. That's, that's uh, so, you know, we're kindred spirits that way anyhow. Right. Yeah, we heard that as well as the 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 biggest understatement of the year. And I forget exactly what was said, but, oh, man, that was... <laughs> uh, shoot, what was it? I can't believe I forgot what it was. Well, it'll come back to me. Maybe not in time for... Maybe not in time for the show, but... <laughs> <laughs> that, yes, that happens. If I don't remember it now, I'll, I'll remember it next time. So. Marco, do you do a lot of uh, business law as well? Do you work Yes, with I am... Uh, um, Giving advice for some companies here in the, in the what have you seen in that way? Is that part of your business gotten hurt as a result of things that are going on, or where companies are in trouble now because uh, you know uh, all of them has a lot of uh, problems with the IRS because as well because of the of the change in the in the policies for taxation, you know so. What they are doing now is some some of them are closing their doors, or some of them are trying to uh, uh, I don't know that word ev ev evadir. It's like uh, yeah, avoid, like um, evade, maybe evade, yeah, yes. like hide, basically. <laughs> Somehow, you know, trying to make some business un under the table. Yeah, you know, otherwise they cannot survive. Mm -hmm. It's sad, but you know, it's it's what is happening now. And what kind of businesses are these in general? Are there any trends of I different industries of people that well, you advise or work with? Loja, as you know, uh, doesn't have too much industry as Cuenca, for example, right? right. Or Ambato, or in Quito. Right. So the people um, uh, lives or the companies uh, try to sell goods, you know, like uh, uh, for uh, retail. It's a lot of retail. Then. Yes, exactly. But most of, uh, of them or more are for selling, you know, like um, uh, food or, you know, things like, like that. Mm -hmm. We have a new business in town uh, called Grana Key. It's part of the group of La Favorita, mm -hmm. you know, from the Super Maxi. But what is happening now is that one of the local investments, you know, close you know, a few days ago because they cannot support that kind of prices. So, uh, you know, okay. so it's it's uh, also a big problem here in, in, in Loja. Who was that? Which company was that? Uh, well, um, uh, I don't remember the name, but it was in the Iper Valle. Mm -hmm. Ah, like Tia? No, Tia is now. Okay. Tia is now there, but was a local investment. Okay. You know, from a local... Yeah, uh, like a local supermarket. Not yes, like City yes. Mod. It's kind of like the story that you would hear back home of like Walmart going into a town and then, you know, the local hardware store or something going out of business, like that kind of... Yes, in a, in a year ago, the same thing happens to another local investor, you know, uh, in, in the same, uh, like in the same business, you know, uh, like Supermaxi. You know, he has to close that... Probably two years ago, he has to close the doors of that uh, market, you know, mm -hmm. because that was when uh, Super Maxi comes. It's like, oh, how many years? Like Super five Max or maybe 
It was before it we was got here. So. Before we got here. Yeah. So. But you know, that happens as well. So everything with uh, uh, related with the economy, you know, it's having a lot of changes in the in the past five years. Mm -hmm. Or probably since uh, President Correa is in, you know, in his position. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Hmm. Anything else to add or any other questions? Well, Marco, let me, um, do you have, uh, how can we give out your information? Do you have an email, website, phone number, that, anything that you want to give? Um, so if our clients are considering coming to Ecuador, they can contact you about legal matters? Yes, well, uh, my website is under construction, but I have an email of... I don't know if you can help me with the yeah. spelling it because it's a little bit uh, difficult. It's studio. Darnell, maybe you can. You, yeah, you sure. have it. You can. Yeah, let me. Uh, let me see if I have the uh, your email in my phone. It's I know I have your number. It's Studio Juridico Munos, like E S T U D I. Right. Got it. Okay. So. um Marco can be reached by email at Estudio Juridico Munoz. Munoz. Ah, Munoz. It's M U N O C. Okay. So, okay. So, so that's not an N-Y there. They it's don't an N. Okay. Yes. Uh, at gmail.com? Yes. Okay. So that's E S T U D I O J U R I D I C O. M U N O Z at gmail dot com, and also, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and uh, Marco's local cell phone number here that he can be reached at is zero nine nine four one zero nine six three four. Again, that's zero nine four one zero nine six three four. Um. What was the other thing that I wanted to add about that? Skype is, is, is the first uh, before ad. Okay. So his Skype also is the uh, same as the email. That's E-S-T-U-D-I-O-J-U-R-I-D-I-C-O-M-U-N-O-Z. And that is uh, Marco can be reached via Skype that way. Um, also, if you guys have any trouble um, getting in touch with him, feel free to contact us uh, toll free. Um, there was one more point I wanted to add to that as well. Uh, so we have the email, we have the phone number. Oh, um, for the cell phone, if you're calling internationally, um, you would drop the zero before the number and dial the country code, which is 593. Thank you, Marco. Appreciate you joining us uh, on next week's, well, not next week, but later this week's uh, uh, podcast uh, that we'll be recording this week. We'll have um, David Johnson from Cuenca Expats Magazine joining us, so we're looking forward to that. Uh, again, Marco, I wanted to thank you for taking the time to join us today. Uh, happy Thanksgiving to everyone, and we'll see you next time. Thanks. Take care. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you. I love to spend this time with you and share my opinions about what is happening now in this country. Great. Thanks again for joining us. All right.